watching your rocket leap off the pad, arc over at Apogee, deploy its parachute, and land softly in a field, hopefully not too far away. That's why we do model rocketry. But how do you take a model rocket from finished to ready for flight? I'm Rocket Randall, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps to get ready. In order to get ready, let's take a quick look at what happens during launch. As you can see, the first thing that happens is the engine ignites, launching the rocket skyward. There's a delay as the engine slows down, and then an ejection charge ejects the recovery system. So now let's take a look at this rocket and see how we can prepare it for all those stages of flight. Now a brief caveat here. This is a simple way that I have found to do it. Everybody has their own ways, so if you have some suggestions for how to do it better, please comment below and let other people know. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is attach the recovery system. In this case, I'm going to use a 15 inch parachute. And that's a pretty standard recovery method. There's a lot of other ones. There's tumble recovery, there's streamers for lighter rockets. But a parachute is kind of the base model. Most systems use a parachute. So there's two different ways of attaching these stroud lines to the parachute. Here I have them configured in side by side where each side of the shroud attaches to adjacent holes. Another very popular method of doing this is attaching one here and the other side of the shroud line to the hole across from it on the other side of the parachute. Either way, you end up with a very functional parachute. It's really personal preference at this point. So once you have the shrouds all attached to the parachute and we have the uh, the shock cord attached to your rocket. And this is usually done during the build phase. So what I like to do, there's a very thin cord right here of Kevlar. Sometimes it's attached to the engine mount of the rocket. Sometimes it's attached to the launch lug on the outside. And sometimes it's attached to something on the inside like a bar or a glued in piece of paper. Either way, you wanna attach this, the end of the shock cord down at the bottom. In this case, I'm using Kevlar. And the reason for that is as you saw, that explosion's gonna go off in the bottom part of this rocket. And whatever is down below has to be able to resist the fire. And Kevlar is very good at doing that. It's also very strong. So this is really thin, but it's actually 70 pound test. That should be sufficient for the force of the ejection going off. So everything that is at the bottom needs to resist that fire. Second, we have at the top is some stretchy shock cord. And this is when the nose cone gets shot out the top of the rocket, it's gonna hit the end. And if we just had it tied onto the Kevlar, Kevlar is very stiff and it might rip something off the rocket. So this shock cord provides some bounce to slow everything down without ripping the rocket apart. So how do we connect this together? So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take the three shroud lines of the parachute, and if you're using a bigger parachute, it might have four shroud lines, that's all fine, and kind of bring them together so they're all together in a loop. And this is actually remarkably tricky as sometimes um, it looks a little funny when you put them together. There's some crosses and that's, that's normal and okay. The next thing is find the center of the parachute and kind of pinch it down like this. So you should have the top have um, a loop up there and then holding the point down here. Then we're going to take the shock cord right like this and feed the top of the parachute through the loop like so. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a tie right like that and a tie the parachute to the shock cord. Anything that touches the ejection charge going off is gonna receive a lot of heat. And so whatever material that is has to be able to handle it. Now parachutes are typically made of either plastic or nylon, and neither of those handle the heat very well. And in this particular case, I'm using a simple plastic parachute. It's very light, but it will melt under any kind of heat. So we have to protect that. Secondly, the shock cord, while it works really great as a shock absorber, um, has rubber inside of it, and that rubber, if any heat hits it, will cause it to lose its strength very quickly and it can easily detach. So what we have to do is make sure that the heat is trapped at the bottom long enough so that all the stuff can be ejected and not be touched by any of that heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Kevlar cord and kind of poke it down into the rocket a bit to provide a little bit of a buffer, and then we're gonna take some of this um, recovery wadding. Now there's various kinds of recovery wadding. This is a pretty simple kind. But what this does is while the heat will burn it, 
it releases carbon dioxide when it burns, which puts the fire out. It's very important to use heat resistant wadding because if you don't, you're gonna have live embers falling from the sky and that can create wildfires. We don't wanna do that. So what you wanna do is take some of this wadding and make sure that only Kevlar is down below and start tucking this into the rocket. Again, how much you use is really up to you. It's a personal preference, but you wanna make sure that you have enough in there so that it won't uh, allow any of the fire to get up and touch any of the things that need to be protected. So this is gonna be the most contentious thing that I do today, but the question of how do you fold your parachute? And there's all kinds of fancy ways to do it. Um, and to be honest, I'm a little lazy. So the simplest way is just kinda um, fold them across a few times. So you end up with kinda like this with a shape. And then what I tend to do is just kinda bunch the last bit, fold it over, so it's a nice packet like that. Without tangling these shroud lines too much, you can then just take them, wrap them around a few times, and <laughs> your parachute's ready. I've rarely had one fail like this. Again, you can get a lot fancier on how you fold them, but this pretty much just works. So next thing I'm gonna do is just insert this into the rocket and push it down. Then you have the shock cords here. You can shove those down inside as well. Put the end cap in and your rocket is ready to go. So this is where the ejection charge is gonna go off. This is gonna protect your parachute. Then you have your parachute, your shock cord, and your nose cone. And your recovery system's ready to go. Next up, we need to install the rocket motor. And this is the thing I see more than anything causing failures of launch at the launch site. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unscrew the engine retainer down here, and I'm going to insert the rocket motor. If you have no idea what you're doing, the first thing you're gonna to need to know is one side of the rocket engine has a hole in it. This is the nozzle where all the gases are gonna go out, so that needs to point down. So you insert the rocket motor into your rocket with the hole facing out. Then we can attach the retainer clip and screw that into place, and our rocket motor is now inserted. This is the part that gets people, is the igniter. So what an igniter is, is basically a very thin wire like a filament from a light bulb inside of something like the material of a match. So when you have an electric current go through, that filament will heat up and to a high enough temperature that will ignite the match material. So there's a couple of things we don't want to happen. First, we don't want to break the filament inside the igniter up here. And second, we don't want the metal wires running down the side to touch. If they touch, then the filament won't burn. And if the filament breaks, obviously it won't burn. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you very carefully detach them if they're attached together. And second is bend these wires while holding right here, bend these wires out to give more area for the alligator clips to clip on without touching each other. So this is a really nice igniter now. The second thing is when we insert it into the rocket, we're going to look for the launch lug. Now this is a demo rocket, so it doesn't actually have a launch lug, but on your rocket, there's gonna be a launch lug somewhere along the side. So when you put it in, you wanna put the launch lug away from you, insert the, insert the igniter down into the rocket until it reaches the end, and then bend it over slightly, making sure again that those metal wires don't cross. Finally, you'll have a engine plug that you're gonna push down into it, and make sure it gets in there and seats nicely, and now your rocket's ready to fire. Hopefully that filament didn't break and those wires aren't crossed and you're all ready to go. Now, when you take it out, you put it on the stand, the rod, because you put the launch lug on this side, the rod will go here, making it very convenient to attach the alligator clips to here and you're ready to launch. So now you have a rocket ready to go. You can launch it and have a lot of fun. I hope this has been helpful in how to prepare a rocket for launch. Let me know how things are going and if you have any cool launches you've been doing. I'm Rocket Randall. Keep your eyes in the sky with Max-Q Rockets.